Today the weather is finally a bit acceptable. I mean, it's very nice for this time of the year. So it's time to do some chores. But maybe I'm gonna set the ducks free first because they're annoying me. Come here, Jess. They're so used to running outside freely that they just won't shut up until they are free. So I kinda have to do this, otherwise it's just quacking all day. Here's Fetcher, he's limping a little bit. Yeah, that's what you get when you fly so much and you don't have a palm to land in and you just throw yourself on the ground and then you start limping of course. But you didn't break something so we will be fine. You just have to be a little bit more careful. Oh, and we got some new ducklings, Muscovy ducklings. And these are actually wild types, or actually wild Muscovies, I should say. Not wild type, but wild. Now the difference between the regular Muscovies or the domesticated ones is not that obvious, but there is a big difference. They are a bit smaller and they don't or they won't develop these red ranunculus i believe it's called like the red meat around the eyes instead it will be black and the females will also have almost no bare skin so that's quite interesting i'm gonna keep two a male and a female or a duck and a drake i should say and the others will move to a friend of mine but today <laughs> as i wanted to say it's a time to do some chores. And with chores, I mean a little bit cleaning, but I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. But I am gonna show you the fixing or the replacing of some chicken coops. Because I have three coops that are in a very bad state and it's gonna start raining. In Belgium, we are kind of developing a two season climate where you just have dry summers and wet winters but i haven't seen f snow and freezing in years maybe just like one day two days but never like weeks weeks on end so i prefer it actually to to freeze because then also the diseases freeze but now it's it's just wet and so we want to keep the chickens as dry as possible but to do that we need a good dry chicken coop and sadly three of them uh yeah they're not good anymore and they're also not dry anymore so i think i'm gonna fix two roofs and just replace one complete coop because we have a new coop of our new sponsor i'll show it to you in a bit but first let me show you the coops that i'm talking about the first coop is over here it's actually still quite okay and it's actually a dark house i should say but the roof is yeah the roof is gone eh? as you can see it won't survive another winter and it's starting to damage the side over here as well but it's not rotten yet so i think i can still fix it just put some screws in here and i think it's fixed and i also just installed the anti-red mite kit available on my website soon links in the description below so off to the next coop and that's the coop next to this one and i have to say this coop uh, i really don't like it i like the design very much it's also a very beautiful coop or at least it was a very beautiful coop but as you can see i've already had to fix the roofing of the laying boxes once or even twice i'm not quite sure the roof over here as you can see this part is also just rotten and eaten away and yes the chickens do eat the wood the door has already been replaced for some reason my coop collapsed and i think that the ground panel or the floor is also broken i'm not quite sure but this doesn't look so well 
the lane box is also like a little bit crooked. It's like it's like it like shifted. The door over here is broken. Oh, it's, just, it's just a mess. So I think I'm just gonna replace this group. I'm finished with this one. And Blue lives over here. And he's my biggest rooster. So I think I'm gonna put a nice big group in here. So he and his hands can sleep safely and dry. Because when the inside or the roof collapses, we might have some dead chickens. And that would be even more of a disaster. So far, no casualties. Now I just have to figure out how I'm going to move this on my own. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought about this before I was gonna make this video. <laughs> I'll just try. In worst case scenario, I'll just take my axe and chop it into pieces. Off to the next one. I think I might do the roof just like this one. Just a piece of wood and some... We call it pound, pound foil. We use it for pounds, for building pounds. And this is just never, I wouldn't say it never breaks, but it's very sturdy and it keeps the wood dry. So the wood doesn't rot. And I don't constantly have to replace the roofs. And thus it keeps the coop dry as well. And I believe that this coop was my first ever chicken coop. I mean like my first ever decent or prefab, prefabricated chicken coop. And you can also see it. Uh, I've already had to replace the door or add a door. This roof, can you even call it the roof? It's just a rotten piece of wood. It's not even wood, it's just like pressed wood chippings. Same goes for the roof. We kind of tried to fix it with some plastic foil, but it's not strong enough and yeah. This is how it looks now. Over here as well. Not good. So I need like a new hook to keep this closed. But the wood is actually still still okay. So I think I'm also just gonna replace the roof. And just go for the second coop that I showed you. And replace that one. Here lives Mario and his hands. He's a bit camera shy. Too bad because he's a very nice rooster with his magnificent red mottled coloring. And my golden pheasant, cinnamon golden pheasant, a very rare color. In this case the black is, is brown or chocolate or I don't really know. I believe it's a recessive gene. This is a female, a cinnamon pied, or maybe it's also just cinnamon. I don't know. I don't. I think it's cinnamon pie because I've seen cinnamon hands, but I don't own one. Too bad. She's limping, but she always has limped. I think yeah, it's just it's too much inbreeding. But enough about that. Today is about my new chicken coop, so let me show it to you. And here it is, magnificent, right? Yeah, I was also a little bit surprised. Look how thin this is. So I have to build it myself. I'm curious, I'm very curious. It's from Kukiolotta. I hope I pronounced it right. Bubinche approves. She doesn't approve the water <laughs> on the packaging. I hope it didn't damage the package. I don't think so because it's a coop for outside, so it should withstand the water. It's made out of HPL, high pressure laminate. So it's a different material. It's a bit like, in Belgium we call it Trespa. But Trespa is a brand. And I'm not sponsored by Trespa, I'm sponsored by Cookie Olotta, an Italian brand. So I'm gonna say HPDL plate. Enough about the technical details. I'll just open it and show it to you. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, it was in worse shape than I expected. I think we first might need to do some cleaning over here. Clean out the tray and try to level this out a little bit more.
There might be some mice under here. Is the beach is going crazy. I'm gonna lift it and see what's under here. I don't really see anything. Maybe the chickens already ate it. The two big Ancona hens over here really love to eat mice, so... That might have been the case, or they just left. Let me level this a bit, and then we get our new coop. It's finished and I have to say it looks amazing. I really like it. I believe I said earlier in the video that it was an automatic gate or an automatic door. That's not the case but there is an option to mount like a motor over here and make it an automatic door. But now it functions like this. You just pull this part and then it goes to the top. But yeah, as you can see you have to use both of your hands, then like this, with your two fingers, go up until you hear the click, and now it's secured, and the chickens can go in. To put it down is the same way, you pull this part, and it closes, and it can't go up, and of course, can't get it, very nice. I'm gonna open it back. You can open the roof for laying boxes and the main roof. It's also very easy. You just push it up and it should click. Oh yes. Oh. Voila. But yeah, it's not perfectly level. That's why it's a little bit difficult to do it with one hand. But with two hands is very easy. And then you can go and take a look inside and clean it if necessary. The bottom is very smooth since it's made out of high pressure laminate plates. There are also no cavities or a lot of cracks. So when you're dealing with red blood mice, they don't really have a lot of spaces to hide. Maybe except here at the roost, apart from that. There are not a lot of places to hide, so it's a very good coop to use when you're dealing with red blood mites. There are four roosts, as you can see. Two on top and two on the bottom. It's very spacious. At first I was like, hmm, 20 chickens in this coop? That's, yeah. But I think it's possible. But maybe not like the 20 most biggest, heaviest breeds, like Koshins or Brahmas or something like that. But then Konas, yeah. I think you could, could fit in 20, maybe 15 or 16, no problem. On the other side, we also have some lane boxes. So there are actually four lane boxes. They open the same way. You push it a little bit up. And then just like that. And here we have... Yeah, like... A very simple, automatic way to keep it open. It's very wide, as you can see. It's like 
let's say 40 centimeters it's very easy to clean or to collect the eggs very convenient if you want to clean the, the inside part you'd say oh that's that's a bit tricky because it's very high but they thought about that as well and there is an opening over here same thing you just push it up but yeah with one hand it's not so easy and then you open it and then you can just take your shovel or your broom put like a bucket or something over here and then just shovel everything out it might not look sturdy but as you can see it's very sturdy so no way a predator can get in there are some nice holes over here it's like it's like a rising sun or a sun that's about to set and it's, there are two at each side and the opposite side so we have good ventilation so yeah, I, re I really like it. And as you've seen in the time lapse, it's very easy to set up. You only need four bolts, these two and those two, and that's it. You might tighten it a little bit better than I did. Maybe I'll still do it. But it's very convenient, very easy to set up. Very, very easy. I would recommend setting it up with two people because then it's a lot easier than it's maybe 10 minutes or yeah, if it's your first time, maybe like 15 minutes work with two people. So easy, it's very easy. You don't need to drill, you don't need knowledge about drilling or whatever. It's so easy. But I did it myself and as you can see, my girlfriend also helped a little bit. But yeah, it's so it's so easy. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you more than that, that then it's just it's so easy. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit more comfortable because as you can see it's just an empty coop. I'm gonna put in some straw, some bedding. But yeah, in my case all the bedding is straw because I have a very big quantity of straw. And it's so spacious. If my bed for some reason breaks down and I'm just gonna live in here. I'll, I'll throw the chicken somewhere else and I live here. <laughs> no, for me it's I'm a bit bigger as you can see. So for me it's it's too too small, but it, it could be an option. Look at the ducks, how happy they are now, and how quiet. <laughs> 